Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jen Mack, and uh, I'm from Magic Leap. Um, so here, I'm here today to tell you about uh, easy spatialized computing with the web. Um, so, so I have a confession to make. Uh, I'm an engineer. <laughs> and, and I'm an engineer because I like to make stuff. I'm also kind of a, a lazy engineer, um, wh which I like to call being uh, highly efficient. Um, and and I'm, I'm so highly efficient that they made me a manager. Uh, so now I have a bigger team to make more stuff. Um, and so one of the things I'm responsible for at Magic Leap is the Helio browser and the web platform. So the Helio browser is basically you know, a web browser. It's a port of Chromium, uh, which means that it supports the vast majority of the existing web. Anything that like, you, know, you on your laptop or whatever on your phone fiddling with today um, will probably be supported by Magic Leap. Um, and, and when we were building this browser, um, you know, we were like, well, we think it should play nicely with everything else. We think it should play nicely with, uh, with other applications. So for example, you know, you could have like, you know, you're in a conference call, you're working away, so you have your, like, your Hangouts window up here on one thing. But because this like, call is really, really boring with a bunch of program managers or Jira tickets or whatever, um, you, know, you could have like, another screen up in your space you know, playing like, a, a ball game or, or some sports you know, in a different time zone. And then like, because you bought some like, fresh new kicks, you know, and, uh, and you're like, hey, how am I going to tie my shoelaces? You could have like, Ian's like, shoelace site up you know, on, another, uh, on another screen. And uh, you know, which is one of the best things on the internet, actually. Um, and then you could have other applications as well. You know, you might have like a weather app, you know, sitting in the corner, or something productivity related, or you know, a wall clock. And all these things can coexist together. Um, and 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 one of the reasons why I work on on browsers is because because I love the internet. You know, uh, the internet is great. It's just like this rabbit hole of information. Uh, like there's all kinds of cool stuff on it, and it's really really accessible. You know, it's really easy to get content. Um, you don't have to make a commitment. You don't have to like go to the store and find the thing and download the thing and wave the thing to download and then you know maybe even pay money because you're like I don't even know if this is going to be any good, right? You can kind of like start browsing, um, and even if you do have to pay money for a subscription to something like the New York Times or, or any other news news sites, um, you know you can kind of try before you buy. The other great thing about the internet, and one of the reasons why there's so much content, is because it's so easy to build for the internet. Right? It, it's so accessible. Um, um, they even like these days, like even like middle school kids, you know, they learn in, in school like how to build a website. You know, sometimes even elementary school kids. But it's powerful enough that um, you know, even you have like fully fledged professionals, you know, building sites. You know, not only just like developers, but also like you know, visual designers and interaction designers. You have a whole team of people, videographers. You have a whole team of people building content for you, um, and and it's gotten so complicated that now a lot of companies, you know, outsource it to agencies. Right? They don't even have it in house. Um, the other great thing about the internet is that it, it's easy to publish. Right? So so anybody can put content out there uh, for free. Even there's lots of like uh, you know free to publish sites or very low cost to pay. Um, you can build stuff for the internet, you know, with very, very little, like very little resources. You can even build like websites, you know, at the computer at the library. Uh, and there's tons of tools to help you build like really, really cool stuff. You know, frameworks. Um, you know, other hosting sites also have tools built into them. So there's lots and lots of things, ways to build stuff. And, and one of the reasons why it's so easy to build stuff for the internet is because it starts with these really, really basic building blocks, uh, declarative tags, right? So most of you guys have at some point probably built a website. You know, you start with these little tags, like P for paragraph, and you like stuff some text into it, or images, right? And now, now you can put like an image in your page, video, and then you want to get fancy and you start adding like CSS. You know, you can style it and make it look pretty. Uh, and then you're like, oh, I want some event systems, or I want to do something programmatically. Then you start adding JavaScript. Right? So it, but it, it all starts with these really, really simple, webby building blocks. Um, and I think AR should be easy, too. Right? There, there's no reason why building stuff in augmented reality has to be difficult. Um, you know, wh why should you have to know like, a whole bunch of you know, matrix multiplication uh, that you may or may have ta not taken in you know, school anyway, if, you, if you're not like an engineer? Um, you know, why should you have to learn like a new programming language? You know, why should you have to build up an entirely new interaction paradigm every time you want to build something? Um, so when I first joined Magic Leap, uh, uh, the, like the first advice before we shipped this thing was this like, 
headset that you had to go into. So you had like literally stick your face into this headset, um, and, and it was stationary. But when I looked through it, I saw a glimpse of the future. And then, you know, as we started building stuff, I started daydreaming, like, well, what can I build with this thing? You know, and, and what do I want to make? And, you know, I, I, I wanted to like, I wanted to send, you know, like emoticons, but I want to send like 3D emoticons to my friends that are like, you know, when I think something's gross, I wanted to barf on them, you know, just like, bleh, right, with particles, right? I want to I wanna send like 3D cat memes to my friends, you know? I want to send like, 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 you know, I've been, uh, I've been cheating on my truck and like looking up like other new trucks to buy, right? But, but I, what if I want to like, I, I want to, you know, see how big that truck is in my space. I want to see like, is it like going to fit into my garage? You know, because nowadays like compact trucks are not so compact anymore, right? And, and, and I'm going to regret saying this, but because uh, uh, I hate horror movies and they terrify me. But like, what if you're like watching a movie, you know, and you're just like chilling there on your couch and, and you've got this big screen up and, and you remember like uh, the ring? You know, with the, like the girl that comes like crawling out of your TV set. Like, what if you're just chilling there, you know, watching watching some like YouTube content or some other streaming video content, and then all of a sudden, this like monster comes like crawling out of your out of your screen into your space, like, and starts wandering around, right? So there there's so many like cool things that that you could build. Like, what if you're building furniture, and you know, you know, when you're like building furniture, and there's like, you know, five different lengths of bolts, and you're not really sure which bolt, you know, goes into what what spot, right? What if you could like hold up? Yeah, this is, you know, this is the right size bolt. Yes, this is the one, and then you like screw it in. So, so when I started looking into actually how to build this stuff, um, I found that it was really, really difficult. Like it, it's not easy at all, you know? It requires a lot of work. And, and they say the best kind of engineers are kind of lazy, and I don't know if I'm the best kind of engineer, but I'm definitely kind of lazy. And I don't want to like build an entire like app just to like send a bunch of 3D dancing penguins, you know, to my friends, right? Like, like I just want to like copy and paste it, you know, just like I would like a GIF or something, and drag it into my experience and like, you know, call it a day and be like, hey, look at these dancing penguins. Um, so I was like, well, if the internet is easy, you know, and, and the web is easy, why don't we just add 3D to the web? Why not just like make web pages 3D? And and that's what we did at Magic Leap. So. This is what we did. So we're going to start with like a really, really simple, basic, very webby building block, which is the tag, a declarative tag, right? And then all you have to do is add this tag, and you point the source at your, at your 3D model, uh, and that's it. That's really all there is. So you, so you can now have this like 3D content you know, in your page. And then let's say you want to take this like 3D content like out of your page, so you can set an attribute. And then you can take that 3D content and you can drag it out into your space. And as a developer, you can you can you know tell say you know what size it's going to be. So I can now take this like you know if I'm shopping for trucks, I take this truck and drag it out into my space. And now I can see how big this truck really is. Um, or you know you can take you know they have models of celebrities. You can take it out and drag it into your space. And you can see how short most celebrities actually are. So what's great about this? is that it, it lets the browser and the operating system do all the heavy lifting, right? You're, you're as an application developer or, or the creator of content, you know, you don't have to figure out, you know, like the tracking of, you know, scanning of your space and determining what's a surface and what's not. Um, the operating system will take care of all of that for you. You don't have to figure out like a brand new interaction paradigm or, you know, figure out even what interaction paradigm you want. Um, you know, the, the browser will come with, you know, a web-friendly event, you know, very easy to use event system that, that you're all used to. Um, the other thing is that it, it's fundamentally private and fundamentally secure, right? So when you're building an application or even like an immersive web experience, you're, you're enabling that application or that experience access to have access to like all kinds of sensors like on your device. You know, whether even if it's just a mobile phone or whether it's a, like Magic Leap's headset, right? You're giving it access to camera, you know, you're giving it access to maybe depth sensors, eye tracking, you know, all kinds of things. And if you're like, I don't know, if you're just like looking up like socks to buy, 
you know, and you're sitting you're in your bathroom and you're looking up socks to buy, and you know, you, your, your toddler is like, you know, running, screaming through the house, like shirtless, like throwing yogurt at the walls. Like, do you really need that, that application or that site to, to have access to, to all that information to scan your space? And I think for a lot of users, the answer is no, right? Like, why would you, you know, there, there's no reason for that if you're buying socks, you know, to, to, to have that site um, have that information. The other thing that, that for content developers is that you're now absolved from having to, to detect this information, but also to store this information, right? Every day, you know, we hear, we hear in the news about like breaches of security, right? It, it happens all the time. Securing data is, is really, really difficult and, and, and really, really expensive, right? It's that, it, it costs a lot of money. And storing data is also really, really expensive. So as a, as a, if you're creating content that you just want to you know, have out there and, and that doesn't really need to know about the user space, um, this way you don't need to know about the user space and you never even need to have the responsibility of taking care of it. Um, that being said, it's still possible for as a content developer to see what, to, to, to know what the user is interacting with, right? So you do have like a web event system that tells you, yeah, like, yeah, you know, there, you know maybe the content has a head pose or, you know, you, you get interaction events or, you know, you, the, the, the control is like, you know, pointing at this and that and the other thing. So you understand how the user is interacting with your content, but you don't need to know about, you know, everything else in the user space. Um, and I believe that, that spatial computing uh, means coexisting, right? Not everything, so some things can be immersive, but not everything has to be immersive. Um, it, for example, you know, going back to buying trucks, right? If I'm like looking at one brand of trucks and I'm like, hey, look, you know, and I have to go into an immersive experience to like look at this truck and you know, spin it around or whatever and look at it in my space. Um, and I'm like, oh, well, I want to compare it to this other truck. Now I have to like get out of this immersive experience, go into another one, and, like relearn a whole new set of interaction paradigms for this other application, right? And then like I still can't really compare like this truck to that truck, you know, because I have to like jump back and forth, you know, between trucks, right? Um, uh, and in between experiences. And, and that's kind of, it, it's not that natural. Um, so, you know. Like, like not just buying trucks, but like what if you're, uh, you know, you're, you're watching TV, right? Or you're, you're watching uh, a video um, and you want to look up like, you know, what some character is wearing or, or where that's, what city that, you know, that, that, that show was filmed in. Um, you know, you don't want to have to get out of your experience in order to do it. Um, you know, the other thing is like shopping for clothing, right? Like, you know, what if you want to put together an outfit? You only have budget for like one statement piece, right? So, you know, you want to put together an outfit from like multiple stores. We're not like head to toe, you know, athleisure, you know, wearing people all the time. Sometimes we have to dress for work. Um, and, and when I'm at home, uh, you know, chilling on the couch, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I have like a lot of things going on. Like I've got, you know, I've got my TV, I'm watching hockey or whatever. Um, you know, and then I'll have like, you know, one computer because I'm, I'm falling down the internet rabbit hole. Um, sometimes I'll have a work computer because I got a team on the West Coast and, you know, I want to keep track of them as well. Um, and then like my mom is texting me on my phone because she's like, have you eaten yet? What did you eat for dinner? Did you eat enough for dinner? You know, that, and, and that's really, really natural to, to, to coexist with a bunch of different applications at the same time. Okay, so in short, I think that uh, 3D declarative web gives you the easiest and fastest path to creating stunning uh, augmented reality content. Um, and uh, late also today, uh, we have a few other speakers from Magic Leap. Uh, we've got uh, Chris Williams, who's going to give you some more details about like, how you could actually build um, a 3D website and, and, and what Prismatic is and a little bit of how it ties into to Helio. Uh, we also have uh, Damien Franco, um, who's going to show you some examples about like, what we put together uh, within Magic Leap and also with some of our partners, such as the New York Times and Wayfair. Um, and also today, we have Mark Rushton, um, who's going to talk to you a little bit about like, the Magic Leap landscape and uh, building applications that can live concurrently. So I'm Jen Mack. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to me. And I can't wait to see what you're going to build next. So let's go build some stuff together. <laughs>